All right, here we are, guys, back for another Golf Clash tutorial video here. And let's go ahead and get our screenshot here and start to edit this. So a very first priority um, that I'm going to use on this would be a rock, you know, six or higher. Um, additionally, you know, the next number one priority, we're going to go with QB and at least an eight, hopefully. Alternatively, you know, we can hit similar shots with Apocalypse. Um, we can we can basically kind of shot copy ourselves a little bit and just kind of copy um, those top shots with just copying the spin and we can use Thor Hammer uh, two or above a puck two or above and the Thor Hammer is going to have a little bit more ball guide than the Apoc does it might be a little bit better typically aside from that we can go extra mile uh, you know, five or six should be plenty good enough. Now, let's talk a little bit about the shot. So I usually aim towards this shadowy area, towards the base, right around here. I try to make sure that I hit this underside of this slope so it actually angles. What, what, what this does is it actually gets it to kick right. You won't need curl using this method. And what I'll usually do is I'll get this first bounce to do this, then the second bounce to do this, third bounce to do this, and then hopefully get it rolling smooth before it reaches this fringe and just kind of go down and trickle down towards the hole like this. So um, I play this hole very well. You can check the Royal Open for my tutorial if you would like to see, uh, you know, my pretty much overall method. Um, but I should have this pretty well covered on my channel. You could probably find it various spots. Now, what I'll usually use is about four as my base backspin. So these are all backspin numbers. It's not backspin, it's topspin. <clears throat> so all these are going to be top numbers. So I'll use topspin. Um, as I get towards a tailwind, I'll start to come off of this. So I might use three, three and a half, three and a half. Um, in the headwind scenario, uh, I, I usually kind of just alter my land zone just slightly. I might do 4.5. I, I, I won't increase it very much and I'll just kind of tweak my land zone just slightly because I don't want to get too much topspin that it gets out of control. So you won't see me add on as much top spin as I will take off. So there you'll see I'll take off a full, but I won't add more than four and a half. That's kind of my limit, uh, depending on the wind. That'll never go beyond that because I don't want to try to get it out of control and going up that hill. I want to make sure that I stay away from that. So let's talk a little bit about this and um, let's do our side wind case. So um, it's a little tricky because as you move up here, it kind of changes from as moving down below here. So for instance, in this case, you know, I might use max minus 10%. Whereas if I'm adjusting this way, I might go a little bit closer to max. It might be almost max spot up. So it just kind of depends on the side wind more so than anything. So for the tailwind case, uh, similar, similarly is gonna apply. You know, you see these little shifts in the arrow, it might change the way because you might have to adjust back this way or you might have to adjust up this way. So um, the way that I'll usually do this is very similar to this other case, kind of max to max um, minus 10%. So somewhere in between these two values. And with the headwind, we're pretty much always going to go at least max, sometimes even maybe max plus five to 10. So we'll just put plus 5% uh, 
Um, really very, very few times you're going to need more than that. So somewhere between max and max plus five just depends on how big your win gets. And the way that I'll play this is sometimes it needs curl, but if you can, you, you, you might not need it at all. So it does, it, it, it's dependent upon you landing kind of on this side hill to, to get it to kick right. If you miss this side hill, then it may hang out and actually need curl. However, the way that I play it kind of eliminates curl from being necessary, which makes the shot easier. And then the only other thing that I'll do is I'll play the wind effect. So if my ball guy doesn't look like it's going to do this naturally, and let's just say that it's coming up too, too steep like this, then I'll start to do just a little bit of curl, just a tiny bit, but it's going to be based on wind effect. So if my wind is pointed this way, for instance, then I'm going to add a little bit more curl because I need to make sure that I get it enough curl to actually get it grooving on the fairway. Conversely, the opposite is true. So pretty much, and a lot of times I can tweak the side spin. Sometimes I'll use four side spins. Sometimes I'll use six. And I can just tweak that and hit a normal shot. I won't even need. Mm -hmm. Depends on how high the wind gets up for sure. However, um, there's a lot of times that I can get, especially on a right to left wind like this, like a left to right, um, even with you know two side spin, I can pretty much get away. If I land it right here, I, I won't need any curl because the wind effect will actually push it down into the fairway. And the thing that I want to avoid doing, if the wind is pointed this way, if my ball guide already looks like it's up here, I, I want to avoid it coming in and coming in like this because when you get it in too low, then it ends up missing the slope. And sometimes it actually gets caught right here in this surface. So it'll actually get caught on that and you might end up like four yards. So you really do want to get this rolling. So what I like to do is I like to have all the bounces taken care of on the fairway and then just let it gracefully, peacefully kind of gently roll down. And as I mentioned, you can watch my Royal Open tutorials for this. And, uh, you know, there's plenty of instances where this is on my channel and I just have it kind of feeding down using this method. So good luck and see you guys on the next one.